Uh, hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And last week I started putting this interior together and I'm really happy with how it looks. But the countdown is on and we've got 10 lengths left. So this week we're gonna start tackling the dash. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, those watching last week will know that I spent a fair bit of time putting these uh, seats together, um, getting the center of the dash in. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing and uh, ticking that notification bell. It really helps out the channel. Um, yes, yeah, so as I said, we've got 10 weeks left to go until the car's public reveal at World Time Attack. And um, yeah, there's still a lot to do, at least to get it cosmetically buttoned up and, uh, and, and mostly ready to go for the, uh, uh, for the reveal. So last week I spent, spent a lot of time getting the seats sort of tidied up, bolted together into the car, getting the center console trimmed and, uh, and into the car. And uh, obviously this top of the center console is not going to stay raw aluminum like it is. I have some plans for that that I worked on quite a bit, uh, but that will be revealed later. Today, the first job is to start looking at this dash and trimming this dash and getting it so that uh, it uh, looks nice in the car. So I think first thing to do is to get it out of here so I can get it on the bench and start showing you what I need to do to make it uh, look a little bit more fitting. All right, so this is the original dash that came out of the car and um, the guy I bought the car from, if you've seen from the very start, it was basically in boxes apart. Somebody stripped it down and wanted to tackle it, but uh, never actually did anything besides that. The only thing that they restored was this dash, and they actually had receipts for this dash that they actually got reskinned, and it is perfect. And uh, some of you are going to be quite upset because I'm not leaving it like this. Uh, I want it to be in leather. This is in a... Um, I think it's like a dipped, very, very thin dipped vinyl. So I think they get the, the dash perfect and then they, um, uh, or they, they somehow heat wrap a, uh, a very thin vinyl layer over the top. And it looks fantastic. It looks amazing. But I need to fit leather over the top. And um, basically I've got the two different kinds of leather. I've got this beautiful black Ferrari leather and then um, the lower half, I want to have as the same rest, of, same leather as the rest of the car. So, um, what I'm going to do uh, first of all is I need to start having a look and seeing how I'm going to go about fitting in the vents and the glove box and things like that because you can't just um, wrap these in leather and hope it still works because there's extra with the extra thickness of leather in for around the glove box, for example. Um, once I've got leather on two layers of leather on both sides, you're not gonna be able to fit it back in again. So I'm gonna have to go around and wreck what they've done, trim the edges back all the way around so that I can actually make it a little bit smaller and give it some space for the, uh, the leather wrapping. So let's start wrecking a, uh, a beautifully covered dash. So you can see here what I've done, I've trimmed the edge off all the way around and given it a light sand, but now if I have two layers of leather anywhere around the edge, it, uh, it can close still nicely and there'll be room to wrap the leather around and make it look nice and neat. So um, that is what I was looking for, as you can see there. So the glove box will still close and uh, the uh, leather will fit on it and it'll be nice and neat and tidy. So now I need to start looking at the vent holes because this is quite a tight fit in here. And when I get leather in there, same thing, it's not gonna fit. So I'm gonna have to trim and just trim around the edge of this just lightly so that uh, my leather can tuck in there just nice. So you can see here I'm not cutting to the full depth of the 
the pocket here so that the leather doesn't have to stretch too far to go inside and fit neatly and I can still get a nice fit of the vent. Now I'm just cutting a basic shape for the top of the dash. And same again for the bottom. So first of all I'm making sure I have a nice straight edge for where the two pieces of leather join and then I'm marking out where my French seams are actually going to be seen on the car because I'm not going to sew the entire length, just a little bit on either end. Alright so I spent a bit of time then, I've cut out the piece that I want to put on the top of the dash. Like I mentioned in the past, I'm going to have the top of the dash being black because um, a light coloured dash top is, uh, is generally just a horrible idea because you get glare in a sunny day, you get the reflection in the windscreen and you can't see anything. So a black dash top is always nice. But um, the lower part I'm going to have in the, um, the Q... Quoio? Quoio? I can't remember how to pronounce it, but... Um, the place I'm going to make them join is just above the vents on either side. So there's a little strip here where I'm going to have some double stitching uh, just to uh, make it look nice and join up. But to do that, one of the things that I'm cautious of is that um, when you've got the flat leather being stuck straight down and I'm not using any foam underneath, so when this is being stuck flat onto the dash where it's folded over, it's going to be extra thick and I don't want to be able to see that. So what I've done is I've gone through underneath and uh, if I tilt this down, you can see I've measured off uh, the area that I'm going to leave to be able to sort of fold over and do my French seam. And uh, I've taped off that edge. I'm going to go through with the sander now and sand that down. Now there are machines you can get to, uh, like skiving machines you can get that can actually thin that down. And I don't have one, but I do have a sander on my little die grinder and uh, I did a little test piece before um, as you can see here I've sort of I, I taped off a strip and uh, by sanding it down it gets it not quite but uh, almost uh, to the same thickness uh, as the the rest of the leather when you fold it in half so so by by thinning down that piece I should hide a lot of that extra bulge uh, that uh, the French seam makes so I'm going to go through now and sand these little bits that I've taped off. So when I go inside and uh, sew it together, we should be able to get it all nice and neat so you don't see too much of a raised edge. So I went through and I've sanded on both of my sets of leather, um, on the black and on the, uh, the brown, and now I'm going to sew them together. So um, I'm only going to do a little strip on either side where the actual uh, double stitching is going to be seen. The rest is sort of covered up by the center dash and there's like a, a trim panel that goes in the middle. So um, let's start sewing and get this thing uh, into one sort of big awkward piece. So I have my French seams done and um, uh, as expected it's actually made quite a flat transition between uh, the two thicknesses of leather uh, by sanding that bit out so I'm quite happy with how that came out. So now it's a matter of trying to make this, um, this whole thing work and stick on together and not be stretched out too far. Now it's not just a matter of um, spraying it all in glue and just just sticking it on because 
a lot of these areas, um, it won't actually stretch in too easily. So you've got things like this corner um, where I'm going to have to try and sort of stretch as I go and, and do little bits and work my way through. That's the plan. So um, I'm going to do some uh, quick marking now and then start spraying up some glue. And I'm going to work my way along and hopefully sort of glue this uh, leather over the top of the dash and mould it in everywhere. And hopefully I can sort of get it to stretch and curve the way I want it to to make it look just right. So I'm only spraying the adhesive on a little bit of the leather at a time so I can sort of work my way through and not have the whole thing sticking down where I don't want it to be. So in this spot here you can see I really stretch the leather on the flat area to try and get it so that it will have some room uh, when it gets to that transition to sort of spread out and I'm not trying to stretch everything in one tiny area, I spread it over a larger section. So you can see here in this corner uh, I had to really stretch when I went in and stretch out all of this uh, leather here, stretch it on the flat before I got to this curve so that I had space to let the, uh, the leather bunch up back in the corner and then get this nice transition. And that's actually looking quite decent around there now. Um, so now I'm gonna show you the same thing on the other side. So again here you can sort of see I'm starting to really put some tension in that leather on the flat area to get it to tuck into that corner where I want it to. Working my way backwards and forwards with the handle of the paintbrush. And now I basically follow the same procedure on the lower half of the dash. Overall, I am quite happy with how that turned out. It was a lot of uh, a lot of time spent going over the whole thing and really getting tucked in. Um, I used the uh, the end of a uh, paintbrush stick, nice rounded corner um, in the top to try and sort of push it into some of the uh, um, the fine areas to try and get it in. And overall, it's it's a, a reasonably good look. You can see I've sort of managed to tuck it in here quite well. Um, it's, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of bunching there that I'm going to go over with the heat gun and, uh, and sort of tackle around the top there. But overall, I managed to get the shape looking pretty good over the whole thing. Now, there's a little bit of um, uh, texture from the leather here. Again, I'll hit that with a heat gun uh, around there. Um, but uh, yeah, that is looking like what I expected it to. So I still have to do something about the inserts. Obviously, I've got to, still got to do the glove box. But we're looking pretty good. I am pretty happy. So let's get the heat gun out and let's see if we can just get rid of some of this texture.
That is just coming together so nicely. I am just, I am over the moon. I have to find a latch for the glove box because at the moment I don't have one. Um, I may even close it permanently. I'll see, I may, I'll, I'll definitely won't be able to fit the factory glove box because it's very deep. Um, cause, um, down under here, these vents, there's going to be vent pipes coming up here and, um, there's a bit of stuff to go in here. I may be able to make quite a, a small glove box cause glove boxes are quite handy. So I might have to modify that. But again, that is a later job, but overall, oh, holy moly, that looks good. All right. So the dash is in the gauge cluster. Actually, if I pull this steering wheel off, you can see, uh, there is more to come on this gauge cluster later but uh, the actual surround itself is all warped and they all do it um, it's a really common thing uh, this warped cluster and even when it's new it never really lines up that well with the back of the dash if you see it from this angle it's it's always sort of a bit open and just just not amazing you can get uh, reproduction gauge clusters but uh, I think what I want to do is I want to build a panel that's trimmed in leather that sits over the top of this, blends it into the, uh, the dash and just makes it a nice, neat uh, leather clad part that's not going to have this same issue in the future. So let's start making up a template and see what we can put together. So here I'm trimming off the deformed back edge of the gauges and just tidying that up. Now I'm starting to use a thin strip to try and get the rough profile of uh, the curves that I need to then transfer onto a bigger template. Using the Stanley knife, I find scoring in little sections makes it much easier to make a curve with the cardboard nice and neat and even. Now I've just traced the shape onto my template so I get a, a nice fitting piece. Alright, so uh, what I've done here is I made a cover out of cardboard and, uh, and cut it and made it so that it'll actually curve over the top very nicely, although it's very hard to hold it in place, over the top of the current gauge cluster. And this will uh, be a nice piece that I can trim in leather glue or pin down I'll work out how I'm going to hold it down later but uh, I can cover it in leather and make a nice cover uh, for the top of the gauges that I think will look a lot better than just leaving the straight plastic even if I've got a new one so uh, let's go and start cutting this out of aluminium So you uh, might have seen, I just cut out my piece that I, that I need out of, uh, it's just nice thin one millimeter aluminium. And um, I've marked it up and then you might have seen I drew some squiggles on the back and then went over it with the map gas. And basically the, uh, the idea is, is if you um, use the map gas to a stage so that the, uh, the, the texture marks are gone, then you know you have annealed the aluminium. And what I've done is I've made it much softer and easier to bend and to curve because as it, um, as it comes in the sheet, it's very hard and it won't make a nice, easy curve. Whereas this, I'll be able to bend by hand. Um, I'll use the brake to get some of the, um, the bends just right. But uh, yeah, by, by annealing it mate, is going to make it much easier to shape and get into the uh, the uh, right sort of shape that I need. So uh, let's start going through it now and start adding some bends in this on the brake and uh, see if we can get it the, just exactly the right curve we want. So here you can see I'm trying to find anything that's sort of curved to try and manipulate the aluminium to give me the shape that I want. All right, that took a lot of finessing to just sort of get the curve just right for the piece that I was after. And um, 
it's it's a tighter curve at the front and it's a flatter curve at the back, but it all sits on quite nicely uh, onto the top of the factory ga gauge cluster now that I've cut the back off of it. And uh, and yeah, it's, it's going to be sort of a very nice, neat piece once it's trimmed in the black leather. But I now need to stick this into the car. I need to trim these edges a little bit so that they fit around my thicker leather dash now. And, uh, and then I also need to do a bit of a profile on the back so that it sits in nicely and it all fits perfectly. And then we can trim it in leather and, uh, and have the perfect dash cover piece. So here I'm laying down a spare piece of leather in between the sticky sections so that I don't get my top finish piece sticking where I don't want it to. Here I go around cutting a bunch of relief cuts in the leather so I get a nice tight finish on the entire piece. That is looking so good. So um, this is not actually, uh, it's, you know, pinned down. I will, uh, I think I'll glue it to the cluster uh, eventually so that it'll hold down. Like uh, I'll use some Sikablex or something to, uh, to make sure it stays in there. But that sits quite nicely. It sits level with the dash nicely so there's not a huge gap there. And uh, yeah, and it looks quite good from, from the front, um, particularly when it's, uh, when it's actually stuck down onto the, um, the top of the gauges and it's just a nice neat way of sort of making the top of this match in with the rest of the dash I'm very happy with that that turned out fantastic this interior is really looking fantastic it would be uh, nice to get a, uh, a new uh, glove box lock just so that I can close this up and make this all, all nice and neat um, the, uh, the dash is looking really good I'm really happy with how this little cover panel came out it really just ties it in well, and once, as I said, once it's glued down or, or uh, um, sort of uh, flexed on there, I think it will be uh, a, a really nice integrated piece. Um, I still have inserts to do on the dash, which I have a plan for, um, which I have, uh, have obviously not revealed yet. There's been lots of suggestions of uh, different options, and I will run through that when I get to it, but the, this... Uh, this is not going to be staying exactly like this uh, and uh, obviously I'm going to do the centre panel here uh, to match and other parts so uh, hopefully you'll join me for that but uh, I'm out of time this week so I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs Jeff. Hey guys, in 2005 a film director and son of a stock exchange magnate, James Glickenhaus, bought the last unsold Ferrari Enzo to the US and commissioned Pina Farina to build a very special one-off car. It began with sketches by car designer Jason Castriota to make a modern take on the Ferrari P34 from the 1960s. The car retained most of the components from under the skin of the Enzo, including the 6-litre V12, but making it slightly more powerful at 660 horsepower. Externally, the car is made entirely of carbon fibre, with butterfly doors designed to produce no wind noise, even at 260 kilometres an hour. This new body actually provides better cooling than the original Enzo, with greater downforce and less drag. The interior was also completely redesigned with Glickenhaus and the son's bodies being scanned so that the seats were custom molded and the layout was customised as well for their comfort. Pien and Farina also rearranged the wiring to make it more serviceable and in the end the new car was 270 kilos lighter than the Enzo. Upon seeing the finished car, the head of Ferrari, Luca Montezemolo, felt that it deserved to be officially badged a Ferrari and it was agreed that it would be formally named the Ferrari P45 by Pina Farina. All right, this dash has really come up quite nice. Um, yeah, obviously there's lots of time messing around with these little things and we don't have that much time left. So um, nope. yes, 
Because, because uh, yes, obviously the car, like I said before, is being revealed at World Time Attack in Sydney on uh, the first weekend of September. So uh, we are, yeah, it's crunch time as of next week. It's going to be nine weeks uh, left. So um, we'll see how much we can get done. But I am keen to get it to yeah. get it out and. Um, We'll stay ahead. Some of you guys come come down and see it. So hopefully you come and join us. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, like, subscribe, let Jeff know what you think about the about the build. He loves reading your comments. And um, Patreon, of course, you want to have him out. Yep. And see you guys at World well, Time Attack, hopefully. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> see ya. Hey guys, in 2005, James Glickenhaus bought the last Enzo Ferrari. Ferrari Enzo. No! <laughs> and son of a stock exchange magnate, James. <laughs> Car designer, Jason Castriota. Castriota. Yeah. It began with sketches. To make a take on the modern version of the blur. Interior could be, the layout could be customised for them and then... Don't, don't, shh. Let me just, let me do it. Yes. Yeah, man, I nailed that.